So, those of you who've been with my channel for quite a while will know that I'm a huge fan of low-light imaging technology such as image intensifier night vision monoculars and thermal imaging. Now, I've also been creating content related to these kinds of devices for quite a while now and throughout that time I've been doing it on this which is a smartphone and I've basically just been filming all of my content on this channel with this camera and the camera on the phone that I had before this until now. This is the Sony a7 IV. I got it partly because I want to up my content game and also because Sony cameras are known for being absolute beasts in low light. Now, those of us who've seen a lot of videos on Sony cameras such as the a7S II, a7S III, and now the a7 IV will know that these cameras do perform very well when there's a little bit of light. However, what is considered dark in the photography world is nothing compared to what is considered dark in the night vision world. So today, let's take this into the night vision world and see how it compares with night vision devices. Alright, now let's start talking about the devices that the a7 IV will be competing against today in the dark. So let's start with something that can be considered its distant competitors, and I say distant competitor because smartphone cameras nowadays are a legitimate source of competition for dedicated cameras such as the a7 IV. So let's start with something that can be considered pretty low end. This is a Huawei or TD Tech EPA21 Pro. It is a trunking terminal, which is basically a smartphone with uh, radio features. And the camera on it is honestly not good. I don't even know what optics it is. I don't even know what the sensor behind the optics are, but I can tell you that the low light sensitivity on it isn't great and that image quality is definitely not its priority. This camera is basically just meant to take pics of the site and then just send it to your boss. Something like that. So this is our low end phone camera representative. Now let's move on to something that's flagship. This is a Xiaomi Mi 11 Ultra and it has an impressive almost one inch Samsung uh, ISO cell backside illuminated CMOS sensor that's behind a quite big and quite fast f2 aperture lens, which is a pretty impressive setup for a phone. And this can produce pretty amazing pictures provided that there's enough light in the dark. Something like, you know, under street lights, no problem. You know, under full moonlight, this will snap wonderful photos. But obviously not a match for a7 IV as we shall see later. So this is our high-end flagship smartphone representative. Now, let's move on to devices that are not competitors of the a7 IV and for good reason. Cameras like the a7 IV and smartphone cameras such as what we have on these two, they're meant to record photos and they're meant to record videos and where possible they prioritize image quality. However, night vision devices on the other hand, like this Soviet TZS-2 over here, are not digital. They cannot record any photos or videos and none of the processes involved in it gathering light, converting it into photoelectrons, intensifying the photoelectrons and then converting it back into visible light, involve any digital signal at all. So this Soviet TZS-2 represents a pretty low-end night vision device. It uses a generation one image intensifier tube that can trace its technological roots back to the 60s and 70s in the Soviet Union. And yeah, devices in the Soviet military, such as the uh, PNV-57E and even some of the uh, devices installed on their tanks, namely the commander's viewers, they have intensifier tubes that are pretty similar to what's in here. And in general, these devices are good passively, and passively meaning they don't use the IR illuminator here. These can basically work passively down to something like a NL3, which is like half moon level. Beyond that, they just suffer a lot and they struggle to produce a useful image of anything. So yeah, that's what we can expect from this device over here. So this is a pretty low end generation one device representative. Now, let's move on to something that came uh, one or two decades after this. So this is a 
Type 85 night vision goggle. It is what can be considered a Gen 1 Plus and it's from the 80s and the optics on it are quite impressive and the Generation 1 Plus intensifier tubes it uses are number one a lot more sensitive compared to what this uses and number two it, they also have some uh, optical fuckery going on with uh, fiber optics inside the input I think that basically corrects for any distortion and makes the image crispy and crystal clear. So yeah, this will be the representative for our uh, high-end generation one. And oh yeah, uh, because of its increased sensitivity, where this starts to fail at around half moon, this will work happily down to very little moonlight or even rather well in starlight. So yeah, this is pretty impressive. Now let's move on to things that you will see in service today. This is a LDNV 016. It is a generation 2 night vision monocular. And although the housing itself is not military, it's actually made by uh, Lingdu, which is a uh, civilian company in uh, Shenzhen. And it uses a generation 2 plus uh, NNVT image intensifier tube that's a fallout spec tube. And what I mean by fallout spec is that uh, it is basically the tubes that run off the production line that are either the bottom 20% performers or they just simply fail to meet military requirements and basically instead of throwing them away or trashing them, NMVT just sells them off to civilians for civilian use. So that's basically it. So it may not be exactly representative or exactly fair to you know the very high-end generation tubes that are out there. But in general, this tube in this device can produce a useful image down to NL5 levels, which are which is basically moonless overcast, which means full cloud cover starlight. So this can be useful down to the levels of darkness where it's basically starlight piercing through overcast clouds down to the ground and this can produce an image there so yeah all right now let's move on to a device that's in actual service with an actual military today this is a l3 harris pvs 14 it is a us military night vision monocular with a generation 3 harris omni 8 image intensifier tube inside this is basically one of the best image intensifier tubes that you can basically get as a civilian and it's definitely in active service with the US military nowadays and yeah it is really a really impressive performer it's basically this but brighter and a little bit higher resolution so yeah it will still work down to NL5 which is moonless overcast starlight levels but a little bit better so yeah and this will represent Generation 3 night vision devices. All right, let's get the test started. Now remember, what's considered dark in a camera world may not be considered dark in a night vision world. For example, take this scene here. This is distant light pollution from the city reflecting off the clouds down into the scene you see in the picture. The picture has been adjusted to appear as close as possible to what's visible with a naked human eye. While this may be considered extreme darkness in the camera world, in the night vision world, we're just getting started. The light levels in the scene are approximately NL2, which is probably high partial moonlight levels. The night vision devices we are using can go way darker than this. But let's take a look. Let's move into an environment that is considered challenging even for dedicated night vision devices. So this is pretty much pitch black to the naked eye. We're in a storeroom with the doors closed, all the lights off, and the only light sources are some daylight 
that has gone in through the house windows and then under the door of the storeroom into the scene you see here. It is completely pitch black to the naked eye and uh, the only things I can really see with my eyes are little bits of stray bits of light reflecting off of the surfaces, the cupboards. But other than that, I don't see jack shit. And uh, there's really no point in taking a picture to show what it looks like to the naked eye because, uh, yeah, let's be real, the phone cameras aren't gonna pick up jack shit and even the A74 is gonna struggle really a lot here. Mm -hmm. 